Hello and welcome to the Monday, August 12, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today I tried something a little bit uh, different as far as diaries go. Not a traditional diary, instead a little uh, video explaining some of the sort of recent issues that uh, came up when it comes to same origin policy cross-origin resource sharing and loopback addresses. Let me know if you would like content like this, if it's too long, too short, uh, or if I should do anything uh, different about this video. It's uh, just a little trial to see if uh, this is something that could work in the future. And then uh, talking about the future, there's also the past and the past in particular when it comes to interpreting email addresses. I'm not sure if you ever sort of try to parse email addresses with regular expressions and the like. Well, it's not that easy. And one of the big problems here is as a post by Portsvicker points out that email servers, like for example, SendMail still support some archaic uh, protocols like UUCP and as a result may interpret email addresses differently than you would expect them to. For example, if there is an explanation mark in the email address, which actually is kind of valid as part of the username, but SendMail interprets that as a UUCP address, which means actually everything before the explanation mark is treated as the domain and everything after the explanation mark is treated as the username. And that's sort of how you could, for example, impersonate a different domain. In particular, if you have systems where, for example, you need to receive an email at a certain address in order to prove that you are part of a particular domain, well, uh, these kind of tests can be bypassed using these tricks. Lots of good stuff here by Port Specker. It's not just about explanation marks. I'll refer to the actual blog post for additional uh, details. But what it sort of comes down to for me or has come down to in the past is not every syntactically valid email address is actually an email address you want to do business with. I, for example, typically don't allow explanation marks as part of the username. Another common issue is also that, for example, it's legal to use an IP address instead of a domain, and that also can lead to some interesting issues. And following this theme of ambiguous parsers, well, there's a great blog post by Orange Tsai, a Taiwanese researcher well known for his prior exploit work, who wrote about semantic ambiguity in the Apache HTTP server. What Orange is writing about here is in particular how Apache maps a URL to a file. And again, some of the ambiguities that come up here. Apache treats everything as a URL, even if this is a local file. So for example, using a question mark in a file name could cut off the path and treat everything ahead of the question mark as the actual file. This then allows essentially uh, access control bypass where you may gain access to a file that you shouldn't have access to because, well, the URL looked correct uh, when the access control was uh, performed, but then it's being mapped to a file that you shouldn't have access to. A couple of interesting issues here also with uh, rewrite rules and such. So if you're using Apache, in particular, if you're using rewrite rules a lot, uh, you probably want to take a look here that you're not doing anything uh, stupid. And I've seen a lot of people lately using these GLINet uh, routers, in particular as travel routers. They're very compact, cheap, and quite feature-rich. Well, with features come vulnerabilities GLINet just released updates fixing six vulnerabilities, four of which have a CVSS score of 9.8. Like there's, for example, an unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability. Doesn't sound super easy to exploit, but still, please apply the patches. And Microsoft warns of a new Microsoft Office spoofing vulnerability that is already being exploited. No patch is available. The main impact of this vulnerability is that a user may inadvertently connect to an 
external SMB share. It's one of those vulnerabilities where essentially an SMB URL is being interpreted, is being connected to, and with that, of course, NTLM hashes may leak. By now, you hopefully already have port 445 outbound blocked on your network, which mitigates this vulnerability somewhat. Again, no patch available. Well, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have Patch Tuesday coming up. Not sure if we would expect something here, but it looks like this issue just became known last week. So uh, probably not going to see an update for this. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.